Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on LP WAN. Okay, so basically, LP WAN stands for Low Power Wide Area Network. Okay, so this video, I'm going to concentrate on LoRa, okay, which actually stands for Long Range. This video, I'm going to discuss the different device classes of LoRa. Okay, namely, we have Class A device, we have Class B device, and also Class C device. I'm going to explain how these different device classes affect the downlink communication of LoRa. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part three series discussion on LoRa. So guys, if you're keen to know more about LoRa or maybe LP1, okay, you can always take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on LP1. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. When more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me by smash the like button now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Guys, also feel free to give me some comment so that I know exactly how to improve the quality of this video. Last but not least, please remember to turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's quickly discuss on the different device classes of LoRaWAN. Okay, LoRaWAN network can be divided into three different device classes, namely class A, class B, and class C. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to emphasize this again. Okay, all these different device classes only affect the downlink. Okay, uplink business as usual. Okay, which means that when the end device has a message to send to the gateway, it will still send a message to the gateway. Remember, the different device classes only affect the downlink, but not the uplink. Okay, so let's take a look on this diagram. Okay, from this diagram, you can see that basically this is so-called the latency, okay, the amount of time to send a message or the delay to send a message versus the battery lifetime. Okay, from here, you can see that Class A device has the longest battery lifetime, but they has the longest delay to send a message. Class C has the least battery lifetime, but they have the best in terms of the latency to send a message, which means that they have the shortest time, shortest delay to send the message. Class B is in between Class A and Class C. Okay, based on the last slide, I mentioned this, Class A will have the best battery lifetime, but they have the longest latency. Okay, remember I told you that these all the different device classes only affect the downlink. Okay, so downlink means that gateway to the end device. Uplink means that the end device to the gateway. So basically end device to the gateway, we call this uplink. Gateway to the end device, we call this downlink. Keep this in mind, all the different device classes only affect the downlink. Okay, so for example, for this case here, for a class A, okay, end device here, okay, when the gateway has a message to send to the end device, it could not just send a message to the end device. This is because the end device could be sleeping and may not be able to receive the message so therefore, when the gateway has a message to send to the end device, it need to wait patiently for the uplink message. So after receiving the uplink message, it need to quickly send the downlink message. This is because the end device only open two short reception window okay, for the downlink. If there is no downlink message, the end device will go to sleep immediately. So therefore, if the gateway it missed this two short reception window, then you need to wait patiently for another uplink message before it can send the downlink message. 
So therefore, from here, you can see that this form of communication under class A is mainly triggered by the end device. Without any uplink message, the gateway will not be able to send the downlink message. So from here, you can see that all this form of communication from class A is basically initiated by the end device. Remember I told you that class A has the longest battery life and also the longest in terms of sending the message. From here, you can see that why class A has the longest battery life. This is because the end device is sleeping most of the time. Okay, the only time that it awake will be sending a uplink message. After that, they open a short reception window. After that, they will go to sleep immediately. So therefore, you can imagine that okay, why the battery lifetime is the best. Okay, because they only awake at a very short interval. Okay, again, you can imagine why there will be a huge latency for the gateway to send a message to the end device. Okay, this is because Without any uplink, the gateway will not be able to send the message to the end device. So therefore, from here, you can anticipate that the latency okay, for the gateway to send to the end device will be the longest because, frankly, it will not be able to know when the uplink will be sent. So therefore, there is no way to guarantee that the gateway will be able to contact the end device. Next, class B. Okay, class B end device will be basically synchronized with the gateway. What does I mean? Okay, the gateway actually will send a regular beacon to synchronize all the end device in the network. Okay, when an end device receives the beacon, it can open a short reception window called ping slot, okay, predictably during a periodic time slot. Okay, let me paint you a picture. Okay, for example, when the gateway has a message to send to the end device, it knows exactly when the end device will be away because they are already synchronized. Correct? As I told you earlier on, the gateway sent a beacon to synchronize to the end device. So therefore, the gateway will be able to know when this end device will be away. So once the end device will be away, the gateway will send a beginning tag. Okay, the beginning tag will tell the end device how many windows to open to receive the downlink message. So basically, the gateway will send all the downlink message. And after it has finished sending the downlink message, it will also send this end tag to inform the end device, that's it, that's all my message, so that the end device can go to sleep after that. Okay, so from here, you can see that the form of communication now can be initiated by the gateway. Okay, because the gateway know when the end device will be away. Okay, why we have this class B? In fact, class B is the latest. Okay, because nowadays we have a lot of H device. H device means that this end device, for example, it can be away, but not necessarily need to send any data. Okay, imagine this end device is to monitor the temperature. Okay, let's say in one room. Okay, so what happened here is basically the end device will wake up, measure the temperature. If the temperature is normal, I may not want the so-called end device to send an uplink message because the temperature is normal. So basically, the end device will be awake, okay, but they will not send this uplink message. Okay, so therefore, for class A, then the gateway will not be able to communicate with the end device. But with class B, Okay, the gateway already sync with the end device. It knows exactly when the end device will be awake. And therefore, the gateway will take this golden period to contact the end device. Okay, so basically, this is a class B, okay, which is the latest okay, among all the different device classes. Class C. Okay, class C basically will be always listening. Okay, so basically, the end device will be always listening from the gateway. Okay, basically, they will be always waiting the downing message from the gateway. The only time that they are not listening is because they have a uplink message to send. So basically, the end device will have an uplink message. They will switch to an uplink message. So after it send the uplink message, again, from here, you can see that the end device actually switch back to the listening mode. Okay, so from here, okay, again, you can so-called imagine 
why the latency is the shortest. Okay, because the end device is always awake to listen for the downing message. So therefore, they has the shortest latency. Okay, again, you can imagine why the end device it has the shortest battery life. It's because it awaits almost 24-7. And therefore, okay, you can imagine that the battery lifetime okay, will be the shortest among class A, B, and C. Okay, so basically, this is the different device classes, class A, class B, and class C. Okay, so next, okay, before I continue to on the next slide, okay, so guys, please consider to like this video. And if you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Okay, let's go through the last slide, okay, which is the example of service. Okay, for example, okay, for a fire detection, okay, you actually want to put it under class A. Okay, for example, imagine this, okay, the end device, okay, actually, imagine this end device is installed in this room here. Okay, so basically, for example, touch wood, okay, there is a fire. Okay, and then the end device detect that there's a fire and it quickly send so-called the uplink message to the gateway to inform that there is a fire. Okay, do you think that it is necessary to have so-called a downing, a quick downing message to inform the fire detector to run for your life? Okay, it's not, it does not have this call call desire to have this form of protocol, right? So basically, if let's say there's a fire, we want to quickly send the uplink message. Okay, remember all the different device classes only affect the downing but not the uplink. So basically, when you actually detect a fire, okay, the message okay, which is the uplink can still be quickly sent to the gateway, and it is not necessary for the gateway to send a message to the fire detector, for example, to ask him to run for life. So therefore, for this kind of application, okay, it is desired to put under class. A. Okay, so basically based on the scenario of the fire, imagine this. Okay, imagine that uh there's a so-called uh water sprinkler to put out the fire. Can you afford them to put under class A or class B? Okay, for this kind of application, water sprinkler, for example, you need to put them under class C. For example, now okay, you detect a fire. Basically, imagine this. They detect a fire, they send a uplink message to the gateway to inform that there is a fire. Okay, so now the gateway need to inform the so-called water sprinkler to spring up okay, the water to put out the fire. Can you afford to put this water sprinkler under class A or B? Okay, you can't. And basically for this kind of application, you need to put them under class C. So upon receiving message from the gateway, so basically the gateway as and when can send a message to the end device okay, to start sprinkling up water to put up the fire. Okay, so basically this is the application for class C. Okay, we need to have a continuous update, for example, over here. Okay, as for class B, most of the time you can consider to put them under the smart meter. Okay, under smart meter, there is no power shortage. And I think for smart meter to put them under class C is a little bit overkill. So therefore, for this kind of application, okay, you actually can consider to put them under class B. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.